Let's consider this region that's bounded by the graph of f, x equals a, x equals b, and the x-axis. So it's this region inside of here. What we're going to do is we're going to revolve f around the x-axis. And by revolving it around the x-axis, we're going to create a three-dimensional solid. Our question will then be, how can we find the volume of this new three-dimensional solid that we get by rotating f? around the x-axis. Well, let's consider what happens when you rotate f around the x-axis. What ends up happening is every point in f gets reflected on every single side of the x-axis. For example, consider this point right here. This point, when you revolve it around the x-axis, stays equidistant from the x-axis. Now the question is, what kind of a shape is equidistant from a single point? And the answer is a circle. This creates a circle as it gets rotated around the x-axis. So therefore, we have the same distance down here as we do up here, and the same distance is also coming out of the board and going up this way. Everything around this circle is equidistant from the x-axis. Moreover, the radius of this circle is just the distance from the x-axis to the function f. Well, that means that our radius is equal to the actual function value itself, that is f of x. So what's going on here is every single point on f is getting revolved around the x-axis. That means that every single point, when it's revolved, creates a circle. So what's happening here is, by revolving f, we now have circular cross-sections that define this solid. If you were to slice down any point through the solid, you would get another circular cross-section. Well, we know that we can find the volume easily by taking the integral from A to B of the area of each of these cross sections. So each of these cross sections is pi r squared. Of course, r is the function value. So the volume of this new solid that we get is equal to the integral from A to B of pi r, which is f of x, squared. We can trim this up a little bit. This is pi times the integral from a to b of f of x squared dx. And this is the formula for disk method. Because as we revolve f around the x-axis, the cross sections are circles, or in other words, they are disks. What happens when you want to revolve about the y-axis? Well, here we're revolving from A to B, and each point gets revolved about the y-axis. So for example, this point gets sent around this way. And the radius is from the y-axis to the actual function. This is a function of y. So the only difference here is that we are summing up all of these circular cross-sections still from A to B. However, our radii are going to be in terms of Y. And we're going to be integrating with respect to Y as well. That's the only difference here. So the integral from Y equals A to Y equals B of pi R squared, where R is the distance from the y-axis to the function. And that, of course, is just in terms of y.